Hello. How you doing? How y'all doing? Hey. Good, good. Take your driver's license real quick if I could. So he's right up on the van, man. He's right up on the back of that van. Get over for tailgating. Is this your car? Okay. Cool. Where are you headed? Well, we're coming from WSU. What's WSU? So we're, okay, I'm having a hard time reading because of the traffic. So you're coming from Washington State University and you're going there? Oh. We're going to be going to the Oh, okay. So we're finally driving for hours. Hours, days. Yeah. Okay. And what would you say about some SWAT team thing? Or yeah, there was, yeah, there was the mass shooting and everything. Where? Interesting. Well, it's horrifying. He started the university. You know what I mean? So, so y'all work at the university there? Actually, the university. Oh. PhD. Okay. heard about that incident just yesterday or? Oh, it just happened to us. About an hour after Bell was still out there. I'm not sure the institution is that they shoot study. I see. Then we don't know about that. Interesting. Wow. Okay. But do me a favor and don't follow too close, okay? All right. Thank you. Appreciate you. Talk to me when you're driving by me there, you're a little too close to back at semi. We're about one car between you and the back of this trailer. We're about one car with 10 miles an hour, so we're going 60 or 70 miles an hour. We're about six or seven cars. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you guys did? Yeah, and we said that. You guys talk about a trooper? We don't have any SUVs. It was a county guy. Was it like a black SUV? Okay. All right. All right. You saw you guys following too closely? Seven miles an hour, you need seven car miles. Yeah, yeah. That's, that, that, that's the easy way to explain it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's really good to be in the, in the, in the BB man, it says 227. All right. Where are you all Thank you so much for this time. Where are you all to? Huh? Where are we at? 
be at. It's a long haul. You guys scared of airplanes? <laughs> experience that security cameras, doorbell cameras and the like are very, very commonplace now. And that's a part of our standard procedure is to start looking for a possible video source in and around crime scenes. So we started the day of the crime. And then that expanded as we got more investigators uh, to the area for assistance and we started putting together teams. And one of our team's sole job was to go through the King Road area associated neighborhoods, and eventually the main thoroughfares in the city of Moscow, trying to identify uh, videos, uh, video cameras, etc., and then contact those business owners, contact those residents, and ask for copies of that video. And initially, there was a particular <clears throat> area outlined as where the priority was for asking for video. Why was that area selected? Well, that area was selected because essentially it surrounds the, the King Road area and we know that people typically have to travel to and from. We weren't trying to pigeonhole our investigation into the suspect lives in the area. We wanted to make sure that we covered all the bases and so as we began to gather more information we began to expand our, our search area. You may recall from the second uh, press conference that we specifically put out a plea to the public for any video in the King Road area and then we gave a defined area and we put that area on our website as well asking residents, hey if you have video or if your neighbor has video let us know so we can get a copy of that. We understand that video has a finite life and sometimes systems will start recording over themselves. So we started that process very very early in the investigation. Why ask the public for additional help with this white car? Well, through our tips, through our leads, some of the evidence that came in, we start to identify patterns. And like we said earlier, we are confident that the occupant or occupants of that vehicle have information that's critical to, to this investigation. We also understand that even though there's some, sometimes a fascination with a particular case, some people simply don't see the news and may not know that we're looking for it. So if we get the word out there, hey, maybe your neighbor has one in the garage that they don't drive very often. Maybe um, the, there's one that's just not on the registration database. Let us know. So far, we have a, a, a list of approximately 22,000 registered white Hyundai Elantras that fit into our uh, criteria that we're sorting through. That's, a, that's an awful lot of information, but it may not be all of them. So the public 
uh, can help us with that. Joining me now is the father of Kaylee Gonzalez, Steve Gonzalez, as well as their family's attorney, Shannon Gray. Um, Steve, thanks so much for joining the program again. I made a promise to you that uh, our audience would stay on this case and not let this case die. Um, we had a cooling off period last week out of respect for law enforcement to bring the temperature down a little bit. What new can you tell us, Steve? I know we got this new surveillance video that was released by our digital team today. Um, what can you tell us? Um, that film, to the family, we've had that film for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. I believe the business reached out to us directly and um, after they had given it to the police. So it, it was kind of comfort to, to us because it's it's just two girls having a good time talking about, uh, you know, asking about their bartender and, and just just being just being girls on their way to uh, the grub truck. Yeah, so you don't suspect that this guy, Adam, that's stated in the video is somehow a suspect or anything like that. You guys have known about this this video for a while. We have, and we asked, and we did the obvious due diligence when we looked into that, and uh, we've, we were pretty, it was pretty clear that this individual was not a part of uh, the investigation as far as a suspect. Good copy. So, Steve, what can you tell us about the investigation thus far? We, we, we've heard about the car details being released as well. Is there anything that we can do to, to get some answers for you guys so we can get this suspect, whoever it is, in custody? Um, they've, they've kind of informed us through uh, communications that this—they've uh, checked all the easiest paths 
So, like, if this individual had this car registered to his name and it was just something very quick that they could just look up in the area and, and go right to his house, they've done all the, the due diligence there. They've done all that. So now they're reaching out and they're going to look to the community to see if uh, this individual borrowed this car. Um, you know, it doesn't appear that it, it, it's something that they have real easy access to. So he may have ran. And they really pushed the narrative saying, hey, if we can get these guys to focus on something that's really helpful, which is this car, and, um, you know, find out if somebody says, hey, you know, that, that, that car that looks a lot like mine, I'm going to come forward and just volunteer my information. And then, you know, they can figure out if somebody else had borrowed it or if it, heck, who knows. You know, Steve, we talked about this off air. Um, but one of the reasons why I want to bring this up is because I think it's critical to this investigation. Uh, these, a lot of these young people were teenagers, and there may have been some illicit activity that was minor that they would have gotten in trouble for, and it may be preventing them from coming forward. What can you tell these young people to kind of motivate them to give up some answers? Don't worry about all the petty stuff. Four innocent lives were, were lost here. Yeah, I, I want kids to understand that this is such a big uh, case that 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 these guys have their hands full. Um, I wanted to go out there and tell everyone that we support the Gonzalez family, support the local police officers, we, so much so that we want them to be able to work on this case. I know that they, this is way over the normal workload that they normally have. Plus, they have patrols. They have to patrol now. This guy's not caught. So... Um, you know, there were some rumors that I that I had called these officers uh, a, a coward. That was not for these officers. That was for a lawyer that was standing in between what the lawyers, what the officers would like to release and what is actually being released. And I, I called that individual. And this was just about coming forward and saying that the profile is a male. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like at a month we could we can rule that that's not going to hurt the case. Mm -hmm. um, it's pretty clear even. You know, the, car, the coroner said this was a very strong individual. Two people had defensive wounds, overpowered those people. So I'm just trying to get uh, steer the conversation into a way. So I have another son. I have another person who's going to school there, and I don't sure. want him walking around those streets if it's not safe. So, um, you know, we know as a family what we're looking for. And, you know, if they see an individual looking a certain way, I'm, I'm telling my kids, you know, steer clear of that. Steve, but, uh, this I is want your... other families to know. Steve, this is your first, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, brother, but this is your first Christmas without Kaylee. Um, how you doing? How, how's your family doing? To be honest, we're not even really going to have a Christmas because we, you just can't, you can't get yourself there to where uh, it would make sense. One of my uh, children, the youngest one, is going to go stay with some families because they're going to have the normal type Christmas, mm -hmm. and she deserves that. But for us, we, we 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 can't do that. It's it's too close to our heart. And how do you have a celebration like this when you you've lost two of your favorite people in the world? Yeah, brother, we continue to pray for you, our audience as well. Thank you so much for joining the program. Thank you, sir.